If you have your Bibles tonight, if you'll turn back with me uh, to Acts chapter 13, we're going to finish up tonight. Uh, I don't have a long sermon. Somebody want to say amen to that? I looked over at my wife. Somebody gave me a little, one of those little retro bottles of sun drop, and I got it in the refrigerator. And I looked over at my wife. I'm thinking this probably isn't proper, but I sh- I'm looking forward to drinking that sun drop when I get home. Amen. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, you know, there's always there's always something that uh, that uh, that we look forward to. Amen. But uh, I want to say this tonight that. Uh, God's timing, it's God's time is not mine. It's God's will, not mine. God's plan, not mine. God's glory, not mine. And uh, it's all about Him. Amen. And uh, pick up with me tonight in verse, uh, verse uh, 38 tonight in, in uh, chapter 13. We're going we're gonna to finish that out tonight and look at a few things as we look into the Word of God. All of this is relevant to the day and age in which we live. I just can't imagine. I just can't fathom how much this is the day and age in which we live. And this was wrote uh, several thousand years ago, amen? But, uh, hey, well, a couple thousand years ago anyway. But uh, anyway, let's pick up in verse 38. It says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, that's Jesus, is preached unto you for the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, from which, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest they come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Verse 41, Behold, you despisers, and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came, came almost a whole city to hear the word of God. Now would, is that not a revival? Somebody say amen to that. Church, we need a revival. We need revival in our land. We need revival in our homes and our churches. And we need revival in our communities and state and and in this nation today. But in verse 45, but when the Jews saw the multitudes, let me go back to verse 44 to see what was happening. The next day, the next day came almost a whole city together to hear the word of God. And when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, talking about to the Jews. But seeing you have put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set I have set thee, Israel, to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation until the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord as many as were ordained for eternal life that believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up and devout and honorable women and chief men of the city, and they raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off their dust of their, of their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. And let's pray tonight. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can be here assembled together, Lord, as a church body, Lord, as a church fellowship, Lord, that that we can encourage one another and we can share with one another our burdens and share with our joys and share with our peace tonight. And Lord, if there's someone here tonight that don't know you as Savior, Lord, would you draw them to yourself tonight? Lord, And Lord, would you save them? And Lord, if for those that are maybe having difficult times in life, would you continue to work in their lives, Lord, and give them the encouragement they need? And Lord, we know, you, we know that we're maturing day by day, Lord, to be stronger in the faith, and Lord, where we can share our faith into a lost and dying world. Lord, we do need revival. We need revival. We need to start right here. We need to start in our homes. We need to start in our church houses. 
Lord, we need to start, start in, a, in, our, in our cities, in our communities, in our counties, and Lord, in our state, and Lord, throughout the, throughout the United States, Lord, we need revival here in this land. We need a revival through the world. And Lord, would you raise up the man to do that? Would you raise up a godly, uh, a godly man, Lord, that will stand firm upon your word, and Lord, that he can't be swayed to the right or left, and Lord, would it be a man... Lord, that they can't overcome with many words, Lord. It'd be a man so, so much powered in the Holy Spirit that, Lord, they can't, re they can't stand against any of his, re they can't stand against him. And, Lord, would you raise that up in our land today? It may come right here in this county. And, Lord, we do, we, if we're going to be careful to give you all their honor and praise. Be with our youth tonight. Let, Lord, bless them in a special way tonight. Bless J.D. as he preaches that, that word over next door tonight. And, Lord, we lift this all up into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I want to welcome those out on the parking lot tonight. We're glad you were able to be here, and we're glad that uh, you was able to be a part of us tonight. I want to look at three things tonight as we look into the Word of God. And you, you heard this morning as Paul, he, he preached the Word of God, and he backed it up by Scripture, Old Testament Scripture, and and, and right inside their synagogue, and he told them that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? And only through him, and only through him that you could be saved. Now, I want to look at three things this morning, as, or this evening, as we look into the Word of God. I want to look at three choice things that, that we, need, we need to think about, we need to think about in the day and age in which we live, because it was going on then, and it's going on today. But these Jews made a choice. They made a choice not to receive Jesus Christ. Now, that happens all the time, and there's a great rejection here, and there's a, in the day and age in which we live, there's a great rejection to the name of Jesus. You know, when I used to speak in the schools when I was, I was younger, I, I would go on, on certain days, and there'd be four of us speaking in four different classes, and, and uh, they, I always spoke. I, I, I told them, you get me, you get God, amen? And they were good with that. And uh, as I went, you could see in the beginning that those young kids, they, they really received what, what you had to say about the Lord and about prayer. And by the time 10 years went by, you could see a whole different crop of kids that came in. They cared nothing about hearing what you had to say about the Lord. And that's where we're at in the day and age in which we live. Now, that's been 15 years ago at that. And so, you know, that, a lot of things have changed in the last 25 or 30 years. Amen. And, and we're in a place in, our, in America today that people don't want to hear about the Lord. They just don't want to hear about sin because they, they camouflage their sin and they, they, they ignore their sin today. And they know they have sin in their life, but they ignore it. They don't want their sins forgiven because if they had to admit that, then they would admit they're a sinner. And they got too much pride to do so. Well, I can tell you we're all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. Amen. And we need a Savior, and his name is Jesus today. He's the only one that can save us today. And we need to look at that. And I, we, we need to look at that in verses 38 through 46 this morning, Let's, or, or this afternoon. I keep saying this morning. I feel like I'm continuing the same sermon from this morning. So it's tonight, amen? I know it's night. I ain't got all timers yet. <laughs> but it's close. Anyway, look at verse 38. It says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, notice this, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus came. He came and he, he died upon the cruel cross of Calvary. He took our sin debt where we wouldn't have to take our sin debt. He took the wrath of God where we could have peace with God. Do we understand that tonight? There is nothing you can do. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't be good enough to get to heaven. You can't, you can't do all the right things and, and, and think, well, if I check this list off and stay on the course, that I'm going to get to heaven. It does not work that way. You need a Savior because you cannot do it yourself. There's only one that can save, and his name is Jesus, because he says, through this man is preaching to you the forgiveness of sins. You can't do enough to forgive you of your sins. You'll turn around and sin tomorrow. You'll turn around and sin before you go home. Amen? We're sinners, and we're sinners. The only thing, the difference between a, 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 a person that is lost and a person that is saved is they're a lost sinner, and I'm a saved sinner. Amen? Amen? Let's look at that in verse 39 and 9. It says this, But by him, 
By him all that believe are justified. That word justified means being declared righteous. Now he declares us righteous. We don't declare ourselves righteous. He declares us righteous when he saves us. Boy, that's a good day. That is a very good day. Through this man, verse 38, verse 39, by him all that believe. That word believe comes from a Greek word. It means put your faith in, put your trust in, and rely on. So we, that, that, that's our part. Our part is the faith part. We put our faith in what he did. Amen? We don't put our faith in what we can do. We put our faith in what he says by him. All that believe are justified. That word justified means being declared righteous from all things from which you could not be justified. You couldn't be de declared righteous by the law of Moses. If you turn with me over into Romans chapter 9, I'm going to show you something over there that's, 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 that's very important. As a matter of fact, in, in, in chapter 9 and verse 30, uh, this is the gospel being offered to the, to the Jewish nation. It says in verse 30, it says this, What shall I say then that the Gentiles, now you're going to see tonight that the Gentiles received Christ. You, what shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after the righteousness have attained unto righteousness, even the righteousness which is of what? Faith. Not of works, but of faith. Amen? Gentiles put their faith in what Jesus did. He put their faith and trust in Jesus. Amen? Now watch. But Israel, Israel which followed after the law of righteousness, they were after the law of Moses, amen, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Now watch. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it was by works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Who's the stumbling stone? Well, his name is Jesus. He's the chief cornerstone. Amen. They tried to do it by works and not by faith. Church, that, that ought to tell you something. And I'm so glad we come to him by faith. through. We're saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. But look, notice here in verse 33. Excuse me. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believes on him, on him, on him, shall not be ashamed. Now watch. Chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, here's what the whole problem, well, he, he gives the problem. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they might get saved. They thought they were saved. They thought they were God's chosen people. They were automatically saved. They were, they were the followers of the, uh, of the law. They'd done what they were supposed to in the law, but they were lost as a golf ball in high weeds. Church, we can't do it on our own. God has to do it for us, and he did it. He sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sin, and he will forgive any sin. Amen? Now watch. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. There's a lot of religious people who have a zeal for God, but they don't know him. They don't know Jesus. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. What? For they being ignorant, uninformed of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness. When we try to work our way and merit our way, we're just trying to establish our own righteousness. We're, we're really trying to be God. And we're not. And it says, they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For the Christ is the end of the law and righteous to every one, since individually, that believes. Are y'all with me tonight? Say amen. And we need to understand that tonight because salvation came to the Jews first and they were God's chosen people, but, but they rejected that great salvation. Let me ask you something. What? What? What about you tonight? Have you, have you received that great salvation or have you rejected it? Now, I want you to look at the second thing tonight. I want, I want you to look down with me. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Now, now, look down with me in verse 40 because I want to give you the second thing tonight is the Gentiles received the great, the great salvation. There's a great receiving here. Now, watch. He, he warns them in verse 40. 
Beware therefore, talking about, talking about the Jews that trusted in the law, lest they come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, here's what he calls them. Talk the, here, here's what the prophets say. Behold, you despisers and wonder and perish, for a worker work in your days, a prophet which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. It was told to them. It was told to them by Paul. It was told to them by the prophets. And they rejected it. Verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them next Sabbath. They wanted the word of God. They wanted to know what salvation was. And in verse 43, now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. Somebody say amen to that. Who, speaking to them, persuaded them to come to continue in the grace of God. Now, now, so there was, there was Jews and proselytes that got saved during that time. But there's a group of them that didn't. Look down with me in verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came a, a whole city to hear the word of God. But the Jews saw the multitudes. These are the non-believing ones that left out of the synagogue. And they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken of Paul contradicting and blaspheming. They were all over him. Y'all with me? Now watch. Watch what happens here. And Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. Instead of running and taking off, they stood up and preached the word of God. Amen? They, they preached the word. Now watch. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, talking to the Gentile, I mean talking to the Jews, Y'all with me? Now watch. But seeing you have put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So you see that tonight, and it, it, because they rejected that, the word of God went to the Gentiles. Turn with me to Romans chapter 11. Let me show you something there. I'm going to show you a few verses. Because church... We're Gentiles, and we've been grafted in. Y'all know what grafted in means? Look down with me. Look down with me when you get there, Romans chapter 11, verse 11. And it says this, I say then, have they... Y'all with me? Y'all here? Okay, Romans 11, 11. Here we go. And, and I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God, God forbid. But rather through their fall... Salvation has come to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. God brought the, Gent the salvation to the Gentiles to make the Jews jealous of what the Gentiles got. Amen? That's how much he loves us. Now watch, verse 12. Now if the fall of them being the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Now watch, verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, this is Paul speaking, I magnify my office. For by any means I may pr provoke to emulation or jealousy them which are of my flesh and might save some of them. Church, Israel, Israel rejected salvation of Jesus Christ and he sent it to the Gentiles. And it, and, and it has provoked Israel to jealousy. Israel today, when they see us as Gentiles worshiping the Lord, it, it, it gets to them. Amen? But there's going to be a day. There's going to be a day. But there's going to be a work in the Jewish nation like never been before, and it's going to be during the tribulation period. When the 144,000 evangelizing Jews take over and they start winning souls all through that region of Israel, Muslims too, there's going to be a great revival during that time. It's going to be a time that those Jews are going to come to Christ when they see that they, have, they were the ones that killed Christ. But God's got that all in his hand. Amen? Gentiles. Does Jews get saved? Sure they do. Is, is Paul the apostle of the Gentiles? Sure he is, but did he ever, he always took time to, to win souls of, 
from the Jews. Amen. I'm a pastor and I, I visit my people in the hospital, but I visit other people too. Apostle's an apostle. A pastor is a pastor. Amen. But the great salvation of Jesus Christ because the Jews rejected it went to the Gentiles and we need to be praising the Lord for that. You ever thought about that? What if they'd received it? Where would we be today? Think about that. Well, I tell you, in God's sovereignty, I believe He'd save. I believe He'd. I, I believe He'd. I believe He'd do that. Don't you? Now, now, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't let me lose you. Look down with me in verse. Uh, go ahead and look down with me in verse forty-seven. For so the Lord commanded us, saying. I have set free, I have set thee, Israel, to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation to the ends of the earth. That's how he set it up. But they rejected it. Verse 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. And they glorified the word of the Lord. And as many were ordained to eternal life that believed. I want to tell you something. The Gentiles received God's salvation. And it was overwhelmingly how many received it. And in verse 49, and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. You know, this is God's love letter to us. He always gives us an invitation. Amen. But look down with me in verse 50. But the Jews, they stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city, and they raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and they expelled them out of their cult. See, see they, they rejected God's love and God's invitation. They rejected God's men. That's pretty alarming. You know, when you look at that, the only thing that it is goes back to verse 46. It says, but, 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 but sin, you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. They have judged their own selves by rejecting Christ. And they have, they have, in their own way, they, they, they had declared themselves unworthy of everlasting life. People that reject the Lord. Are y'all listening? People that reject the Lord for his great salvation. They bring damnation to themselves. They have received, they, that's the direction they, they have decided to go. It's not that God wouldn't save them. God wants to save them. But they don't want to be saved. Everybody's accountable. Everybody's accountable for, for how they receive the Lord, whether they're going to receive them or not. Let me ask you something. Have you received them today? Now watch, let's finish this up. Y'all with me? Say amen. Because you see right here, you see right here when you get down to verse 50, and you see what, how they stirred that up in verse 51. It says, but they shook off the dust off their feet against them and came to Iconium. When they rejected, when they rejected the gospel, they practiced Matthew 10, 14. In Matthew 10, 14, Jesus said, and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or the city, Shake off the dust off your feet, and verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable than the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in that day of judgment than that city. You know, I just wonder. I just wonder. I wonder where Golo stands in that. I wonder where Farmington stays in that. I wonder where the Graves County stands there. I wonder where Mayfield stands there. I wonder how this area stands. I wonder, have, have, we, have we just rejected him? Or have we not gone out and gone, gone, go you there for? Have we not tried to win souls? Have y'all thought about that? I want you to think about that today. When's the last time you gave your testimony? When's the last time you told somebody what God done for you? Well, Brother Keith, I don't know much about that. Hey, listen, listen, if, you, if you've been saved by God's grace, you ought to be able to tell somebody, hey, let me tell you what God's done for me. Now, you don't need to sit there and preach as long as I do. Amen? In a couple, two or three minutes, you can tell them what God's done for you. 
and how God has changed your life. And, and, and you know, that's when the saved went out and the lost came in. People were giving their testimony of what God's done for them. And, and they'd come in and they'd hear the word of God. Hey, hey they'd, they'd be saved. They'd go out and tell, tell people what God's done for me. Hey, hey, we live in a day and age where it's, it's secret agent man on who's a Christian. Out in public. Don't want anybody to know. It's a, I, I, I don't want to take any conflict. Church, we've got to stand. I'm not talking about standing ugly. I'm talking about we've got to stand. Hey, we've been changed by the power of God, and, and we have a testimony to give the people and give them the hope that they need because people are going to bed in that hopeless. Some are contemplating suicide. Some are in dark places. And listen, if we don't give them that hope, the hope of the gospel, they don't have anything to turn to. They can't realize that everything else has failed in their life and, and what they truly need is the Lord. Are y'all with me? Now watch. In verse 52, it says this, And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. That's encouraging, isn't it? In Luke 12, 32, Jesus says, Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You know God wants to see you saved tonight. In Revelation, in Revelation chapter uh, 22, in verse in verse 12, it says this, Jesus says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Do you know what's our reward? It's to be with Jesus. Our reward is heaven. He said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To every man according to his work shall be, shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they which do his commandments, and they that may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the great gates of the city. Church, Jesus has paid the price. He has paid the price because Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down, the saved went out, and the lost came in. We should be going out. Somebody said we ought to have... Hey, they went to a church when they was on vacation and they had a sign up on the door going out. It says, going out for service. That's the way we should be. This isn't the end of it. Hey, just coming to church and hearing the word of God. Hey, we, we need to take it out. We need to be able to live it out. We need to live it out in our DNA every day. Not a performance, but that should be who we are. That's who Paul was. That's who Barnabas was. They were people of the, they were men of the word, and they believed in the word, and they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they witnessed the many. That's what we should do. We're all called to be preachers. I'm not talking about behind the pulpit. I'm talking, preacher, preacher means proclaiming. You need to proclaim the gospel, amen? <coughs> Church, we gotta, we got to be the church. When's the last time you invited somebody to church? When's the last time you invited somebody, hey, let me, let me tell you what God's done for me. How are we going to have a revival if we don't ever tell them what God's done for us? You ever thought about that? What about you tonight? <clears throat> what about you? Have you been saved? Or have you rejected that? You know, the ball's in our court, isn't it? Jesus come to seek and save that which was lost. And he knocks on hearts' doors all the time. Maybe he's knocking on your heart's door tonight. Let me tell you something. Fear not, little flock. Your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants you to spend eternity with him. What an invitation. That, that same passage over in Revelation, three times, one, two, three, four times, he says, come. Come, come, come. Come to the water of life freely. That's salvation. 
God, join with your heart tonight. I want you to come, take my hand, say, Brother Keith, I just need Jesus. We're going to help you with that. But maybe you got some burdens tonight, and maybe you need some people to pray with you, whatever it may be tonight. God will meet you where you're at. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, we thank you for your great salvation. Thank you, Lord, that we have joy. We have peace because we have been saved. But, Lord, maybe there's someone here tonight that don't know you as Savior. And Lord, maybe tonight they want to they know more about that. And they want to be saved. 